Okay, so let's put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. How many degrees will a big hand on a clock rotate in four days, six hours, and 15 minutes? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before I get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so a lot of things kind of going on in this problem. So hopefully you know how to read a good old-fashioned clock. I know uh, most clocks these days are digital, but if you forgot, I will, re uh, will remind you. But again, uh, we want to know how many degrees a big hand on a clock will rotate in four days, six hours, and 15 minutes. Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is 36,810 degrees. All right, now, if you got this right, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that yes, indeed, you know how to read a good old fashioned clock with a big hand and little hand, but more importantly, you understand how to read the number of degrees when there is more uh, than one rotation going on in a circle. So this number might uh, seem very large and confusing to somebody out there that didn't get this right. So let's go ahead and start clearing this up right now. So first things first, first we have a math word problem. Always use the rule of three when it comes to any math word problem, i.e. read the problem at least three times. Make sure you understand uh, the question, and the question here is pretty straightforward. We want to know how many degrees a big hand on a clock will rotate in this period of time. So uh, what we want to do here is try to model this situation, but before we even get into this, let's uh, do a quick review on a big hand and small hand and just how to read a clock. Hopefully they still teach this in school, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this right now. Okay, so here is a clock. What time is it right now? Now, I'm not going to tell you what time it is. I'm going to ask you what time it is. So right now, uh, this uh, time, this clock is reading either 2 a.m. or 2 p.m. Uh, so in our clock, we can't tell whether it's uh, morning or afternoon or early morning, uh, 2 a.m. or 2 in the afternoon, but it is 2 o'clock. And just a quick review the big hand on a clock is, of course, this uh, yellow hand right here. This represents the minutes. So in other words, if the big hand is pointing right here and now the big hand goes right here, how uh, what was the amount of time that was elapsed? Well, that would be five minutes. So the uh, big hand is pointing to the number or uh, counting the number of minutes elapsed in a clock. Now, uh, the little hand is pointing to the hours, right? So here it is. This is 2 o'clock. This is the number of hours, so it's perfectly 2 o'clock in the morning or afternoon, however you want to read this. But uh, this is just a quick review on how to read a clock. And I know this kind of seems uh, silly, but a lot of uh, young people these days um, just, you know, have a tough time with this, uh, particularly because there are just not a, uh, as many um, clocks around in public. Uh, that's too bad because I remember being a student in school. I would uh, have my eyes focused on that clock. And boy, boy, I can't wait till school's out. I'm sure a lot of you can relate. But uh, certainly... Um, a lot of watches these days have, um, you know, still a good old-fashioned big hand and little hand. So it's important that you know how to read the time, uh, you know, with um, a clock uh, interface. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, talk a little bit more about the rotations now. So we're talking about the big hand on the clock, and we need to understand about uh, degrees in a circle. So here in our clock, this is a perfect circle. 
So at 12 o'clock, it really doesn't make a difference where we start this, but let's just go ahead and assume this is zero degrees. So our big hand is gonna rotate around uh, this clock and it's gonna take 60 minutes to do one rotation, okay? Now that 60 minutes is going to uh, basically cover how many degrees? Well, when you go around a circle one time, that is 360 degrees. So basically 60 minutes or one hour covers 360 degrees. Now here is the thing that a lot of you may not know, uh, unless you've studied trigonometry or basic geometry, and it could be a little bit confusing, so let me go and explain this right now. All right, now when we have a circle and we go around the circle one time, that's 360 degrees. But uh, are there angles that are bigger than 360 degrees? Yes, indeed, there are. So if, let's suppose I said, hey, what is uh, 720 degrees? Well, 720 degrees is actually the angle that goes around a circle two times, okay? So just because you pass 360 degrees doesn't mean that, oh, okay, I'm gonna do another rotation around a circle and it just starts from zero. Okay, so in other words, we could just go 360 degrees and then 360 degrees, nope. Uh, if you're gonna go around a circle uh, two times, that's actually 720 degrees or 360 and 360, which of course is 720 degrees. So that might be a confusing aspect to this problem if you didn't understand that. But uh, hopefully now this is starting to kind of come together. So what can we do? How can we figure this out? Well, let's go ahead and now take a look at the, uh, the question, right? So we wanna know how many degrees uh, a, the big hand on this clock um, is going to cover in four days, six hours, and 15 minutes. Well, we need some sort of relationship between uh, the degrees and uh, minutes. So let's use this right here. There's different ways. We could say one in one hour, we're gonna cover uh, 360 degrees, but because our smallest units, our smallest units of measure here are minutes, uh, let's go ahead and do this in minutes. And of course, you could do this in hours, but then we're going to be working with fractions over here. So it's every 60 minutes, uh, the big hand is going to cover 360 degrees. So in two hours or 120 minutes, how many degrees will the big hand cover? Okay, well, it's going to be 700 and 20 degrees. Okay, so uh, pretty much at this point, if you understand where I'm kind of going with this problem, and this isn't the only way to approach this problem, there's other methods. Well, you know, basically it's more or less kind of the same approach, uh, same strategy, but you could use different units of measure. So if you did this problem correctly, but you took a little bit of different approach, that's perfectly fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out uh, how many minutes there are in four days, six hours, and 15 minutes. So let's get the total number of minutes first. So let's go ahead and take that uh, step. And that step, of course, is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm just interrupting this lovely math video because I need your support to continue to grow my channel. My objective is to find people that are interested in math but uh, even more importantly, those people that are frustrated in math, those people are like, I don't like math, I hate math, because you know, uh, most people who don't like math or um, hate math, you know, like math is my least favorite subject, more often than not, not all the time, it's because people just don't understand. Now, why don't people understand? Well, a good uh, portion of the time, people think that they, there's something wrong with them, like I'm not capable to, of learning math or something wrong with me. That is not true, okay? There's all sorts of reasons why you could be struggling in math. And uh, typically, you know, you may not have had the best math teachers or maybe the best educational setting. Maybe when you were in school, you were distracted with this, that, the other thing. But uh, if you want to learn math, you certainly can. You are definitely, um, you know, have the capacity. But what you need is clear and understandable, comprehensive instruction and, of course, total commitment. Okay. So, you know, those people are out there that I'm trying to connect to so they don't give up in math. And if you're one of those people, if you hit that subscribe button, it's like you becoming a new student of mine. And uh, if you want to take my full course and uh, full courses and okay, get complete full instruction, if you are a student or if you just want to relearn math, 
check out all my main uh, courses, my most popular courses. You'll find links to them in the description below. And if you're going to subscribe, make sure to hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so thanks for listening to my little commercial. Let's get back to this problem. All right, so four days, six hours, 15 minutes. we got to figure out how many total minutes. Let's start with the days. Okay, so in one day, we know we have how many hours. Now, I'm not going to walk through all of the kind of conversion here because I think most people, uh, you know, for the most part understand or have this knowledge. It's very common knowledge, but there are 24 hours in one day. Okay, so how many minutes are there in one day? Well, there are 1,440 minutes. So how did I get that? Well, if there's 24 hours in one day, how many minutes are there in, a, in one hour? Okay, well, there's 60 minutes in one hour. And if there's 24 hours in one day, so to find the total number of minutes in 24 hours or one day, just take 60 and multiply it by 24, and we get 1,440 minutes. Okay, but we have four days, not one day. So this is how many minutes there are in one day. So in four days, okay, that's going to be four times 1,440, uh, 1, which is 5,760 minutes. So that's how many minutes there are in one, or excuse me, in four days. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at six hours. So how many minutes are there in six hours? Well, again, there are 60 minutes per hour. So if we have six hours, that's going to be six times 60 or 360 minutes in six hours. So we have our minutes for these four days. We have our minutes uh, uh, for the six hours. And of course we have these 15 minutes here. So we have all the units to measure here in minutes. So all we have to do is add up everything here and we get 6,135 minutes. That's how many minutes are in four days, six hours and 15 minutes. All right, so now let's go to take a look at what to do with this information. So the problem really distills down to this. So there's 60, for every 60 minutes, you're gonna uh, cover 360 degrees. And we now know that the time, uh, four days, six hours and 15 minutes is equivalent to 6,135 minutes. So how many degrees elapsed uh, during this uh, period of time? Well, there's a couple of different ways you can approach this. Some of you can be like, well, I can divide this, multiply by this. But this is where uh, a lot of people can get confused and make a mistake. So I think the safest uh, route for most people is to set up a lovely proportion. Okay, so proportion is simply two equal fractions. So we know uh, there's 360 degrees for every 60 minutes. Okay, so 360 degrees for every 60 minutes or per 60 minutes. So we want to figure out how many degrees are there per uh, 6,135 minutes. All right, so this is, of course, uh, a proportion. And if you're not familiar with the proportion, it's very, very important that uh, you learn this in mathematics. But here we have degrees in our numerator. Okay, this is really important. Uh, that you understand that the units of measure have to be in the same uh, position in terms of where the fractions are at. And then we have minutes down here in the denominator. So degrees and minutes, degrees and minutes. So 360, degree, 360 degrees per 60 minutes is how many degrees per 6,135 minutes. All right, so this is a proportion. And so what we need to do here is solve this proportion for x because x will be the amount of degrees for this 6,135 minutes. So let's go ahead and solve this right now. Okay, so to solve this, this requires some basic algebra, basic understanding uh, of proportions. So what we want to do here is use something called the cross product. In other words, we can cross multiply to solve a proportion. Now, if you already are kind of lost with some of these uh, you know, concepts like proportions and what I'm going to be doing here, check out my courses. Um, I have my, uh, my, well, I'm going to kind of really suggest for most of you out there that are not students, just want to relearn math to include algebra, check out my new course, Math Skills Rebuilder. Um, I go over basic mathematics, a ton of algebra, a ton of geometry, even some basic trigonometry and some probability and statistics that will really help you out understand what's going on here. If you are a student in a specific course, you'll most uh, more likely find your course in the description as well. Okay, but let's go ahead and get into this. So I'm going to assume you have some basic knowledge of algebra. So what we're going to do is take x and multiply it by 60. In other words, we're going to be doing the cross product. Again, 
Uh, let me just do this because I just can't help myself. So a proportion is two equal fractions. So if we have one fraction, one half, let's make up another fraction like five tenths. These are two fractions that are equal to one another. So when you use the cross product, in other words, you cross multiply, two times five is what? 10. That's equal to one times 10, which of course is 10. So that's what we're doing here. This is how you solve proportions. All right, so x times 60 or 60 minutes will be 60x and then 360 times 6135 will be this. So let's go ahead and get our calculators out because we're gonna need them. All right, so 60x is equal to 360 times 6135. And we'll be, uh, put this into our calculator. We get this uh, nice lovely number right here, 2,208,600. 2, so 60x is equal to this. So x will be equal to 2,208,600 divided by 60. Okay, so when we do that, we're going to end up with uh, x uh, equal to uh, 36,810, but 810 what degrees? This answer is degree. x is equal to, uh, is in the unit of measure of degrees. So there, it's that many degrees per this many minutes. Okay, so hopefully you're saying, okay, this I know makes some, uh, some sense, but let's suppose you were kind of, yeah, maybe doubting this answer. Let's kind of look at it this way real quick to see if this is a reasonable answer. Okay, so you know there's 360 degrees per uh, one hour. Again, we need to understand how uh, angles are measured per se. So here, let me kind of draw a better clock. So here, we go around. It's going to take us 60 minutes. And in those 60 minutes, we covered 360 degrees. But now let's go around again. So at 120 minutes, we went around how many degrees? Well, now we uh, covered uh, 720 degrees. Remember, degrees don't stop. You're not elapsing at 360. So you can just continue this on. So in 24 hours, how many uh, degrees are we going to cover? Well, it's going to be 24 times 360 degrees, right? Because 60 minutes is one hour. So 360 times 24 is 8,640 degrees per day. Okay. Now we know we have at least four days in this problem. So four times 8,640 degrees is 34,560 degrees. So our answer is reasonable. There is a lot of degrees that are covered by that big hand over this period of time. Okay. So hopefully this made some sense and uh, hopefully some of you out there, you know, um, learned something about uh, degrees. And if you even learn how to read a clock uh, with a little hand and big hand, well, that is fantastic as well. But uh, with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.